I've been wanting to make a dodecahedron again. Dodecahedron. And this time, turn it into a sphere on the lathe. And I thought it'd be really neat to do something that's segmented so that you get some really neat kind of patterns based on the the 12-sided object and then based on turning it into a sphere. So I went through some different patterns as to how to make the pentagons that make up the dodecahedron. But I think for now, what I want to try and do is to just glue up a, a piece of stock that's a bunch of strips and then cut those strips into triangles and then make those triangles into the pentagons that then will make up the dodecahedron. dodecahedron. So it'll be, it'll be somewhat simpler, hopefully somewhat quick, but it'll also give me a chance to get to the wood turning part a little quicker and I can make sure that works before I invest a huge amount of time making a bunch of very fussy little pentagons to, to make the saw. So in making those strips, I've, I found some wood around the shop that I want to use. And they're, they're sort of all little batches of wood. So it's, it's good for sort of cutting into small strips. So I've got some plum that I got years ago from a viewer. And I cut that up and it's been drying and it's completely dry. I got some maple that I got, also got years and years ago from a friend. And I have a piece of maple that's from my father-in-law's house that I milled up with him. And so, so that's kind of a, a special piece of wood. And then I have a piece of walnut that I milled up with my friend Gabe. So it's kind of all these sort of woods that I've gotten from all over the place. And it'd be fun to make that into a sort of a one project. So that's what I'd like to do. <laughs> So I, ha I had to take a little bit of the bark off and on the plum, which I think is actually cherry looking at the bark and that, that came off really easily. And then on the maple was a little more work, but there wasn't a whole lot. So um, that wasn't too bad. So I need to figure out now what the best method will be to getting these ready to be cut into strips. And what basically what that means is jointing and planing them. But the piece of maple, the, the longish piece of maple is a little bit warped and I kind of want to cut it in half. So I was checking the other pieces and it looks like actually if I cut that piece, piece of maple in half, it makes it like the other pieces of wood in length. So that, that should be completely okay to do that. And I'll, I'll sort of have, I think, two sets of, of pieces. So the next thing to do is to cut that piece of maple in half and then I'll joint and plane everything. When there's a bunch of twist in the piece of wood that I need to joint, I'll oftentimes take a, a shim and put it under the high point, I guess. And I can kind of balance that with the other side with a similar shim and kind of figure out what half, half that distance is that it's moving, approximately. Now when I joint it, it's more solid for one thing. It's not gonna move as I'm pushing it through the joiner. And instead of taking a whole bunch off of one end and then not cleaning the other end, I can get it a little more even and save some of the wood doing it this way. So I'm running a few pieces through the table saw just to clean up the edges. And once I do that, I'll run them through the planer. And once everything's gone through the planer, then I can start cutting the strips to make the triangles.
So now I can, I can finally start cutting the strips. And the, the first thing I'm gonna do is some of these pieces are wide enough that I can cut the strips directly from them and get the, the width of the triangle that I want from the width of the piece of wood. But some of them, I couldn't make them that thick, so they're, they're a little too thin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut that width of the triangle into a stick, then I'll cut my strips from that piece. So it'll sort of be rotated within that piece of wood. I probably won't get quite as much material out of those pieces, but I'll get something. I think I have enough strips cut, at least to what I've calculated, to the number of triangles I need. I think I need 10 of each color of strips to make enough, to make 120 triangles. Some of them I'm gonna have to add just a little bit of length to. So I'll have a seam towards the end of a few of them, but it should be okay. I'm finally gluing the pieces together. <laughs> it's taken a long time making all these strips. I found that my longest lengths were 23 inches, so I, I wanted to make the pieces that long, but that meant making a bunch of extra little bits for a lot of the strips. So they'll be sort of segmented, segmented together. Then, then when I got into gluing them, I realized it'd be nice to have some kind of clamp or press. So I, I jointed two two by fours to make a nice straight edge that I could clamp all of the strips together in. So, and that, that seems to be working well. <laughs> The last time I made triangles with, with this setup, I complained a little bit that the very tips of the triangles were getting broken off. And so, someone mentioned that I could put a sacrificial fence on the edge of the fence that's bolted down to the sled, and that would give me sort of a, a, a zero clearance spot at the end of the fence. So I'm going to attach a piece of wood to this fence and then hopefully the triangles will come out sharper. So I'm finally cutting the strips into triangles and I have my triangle jig set up on the sled and I jointed the faces and one edge on these and then I planed the other edge so I can have a rectangular section that's the same all the way through the strip. As I'm cutting the triangles they need to be the same or the triangles will end up being different and they all need to be exactly the same. So all of the pentagons are exactly the same. And then the other thing to note is that with the sacrificial fence, I can attach a stop block to that. So I can bring the strip up to the stop block every time and get exactly the same triangle out of the jig. So I can now glue all of the triangles together to make the pentagons. And one thing I realized while I was cutting them, or in fact, before I was cutting them, was that if I wasn't gonna have a symmetrical pattern within my larger strip, then I was gonna end up with two different triangles. One with the maple or the lighter side on, one on the long side and one with the walnut on the long side. So what I decided to do is to make two sets of triangles, which will mean I will end up with two spheres, hopefully. One where it's primarily the walnut with the lighter 
color in the center, and then one where it's the maple with the darker color in the center. I thought it would be interesting to see what the two different takes on the same pattern would look like. I'm figuring with gluing these, I'll just use rubber bands for the, for the clamps on the glue. On a few of the early ones, I didn't quite have the angle exactly right, so I used the disc sander a little bit just to kind of shape, shape some of the triangles to, to get the angles to fit just exactly right. With the, with the five triangles, there isn't a center line like there would be with 12 or 6 or 18. So I can't glue up half and then sand it flush and then glue the whole ring together. I have to make all five triangles fit perfectly when they're glued together. So that's how the uh, glue up went. <laughs> I can cut the angles on the sides of the pentagons now so that they will fit together and make the three-dimensional form. That angle is 58.3, I believe, which I figured out by modeling the pentagons and making sure that that angle was, was correct. And it, when, when I refigured it out this time, it fit the angle that is cut in the sled. So that was a good sign. <laughs> when I used this setup the last time, what I figured out was that the way, was that the side that I put the jig on in the sled makes it so the blade angles into the top of the pentagon. So it, what it's doing is it's leaving a sharper corner or sort of, sort of a, a tighter angle at the bottom and that tends to slip under the fence. So it's not, so the fence isn't quite working to hold the Pentagon in exactly the right location. So what I'm doing this time is to not quite cut that entire vertical height on the Pentagon and leave a little bit of a vertical zone at the bottom so that there'll be a little bit of thickness to, to push up against the fence. And I, I hope that works. It relies a little bit more on the shapes of the pentagons being all exactly the same, perfect. But I'm hoping, my, my backup plan is if it doesn't really work and they don't really go together that well, I can always recut them with that sharp angle at the bottom and re reshape all of the pentagons. So it's a little bit of an experiment, but ho hopefully this will work better. <laughs> I could glue the 12 pentagons together now. And I, I think this time what I'll do is I'll use, I'll start with tape and I'll make it in two halves. So I'll make sort of the, the bottom and the five pieces that attach to that and then the top and the five pieces that attach to that. And I can, the, the idea here is to, to get the glue on and spread around as quickly as possible so that I have a little, once they're all together, I have a little bit of movement that I can kind of adjust and get them all to, to fit right. So I can, I can do the top and the bottom. I can get the glue in as quickly as possible, fold them together, and then glue the two halves together. And then I'll have all the pieces together and held with the tape and I can kind of adjust and kind of mush it around, get the seams as tight as I can. Then I can put the spring clamps on and that'll help all the joints kind of push together nicely. And it se seems to work doing it this way. Towards the end, I was kind of wondering if instead of 
letting it sit on the table because there are spring cl clamps all the way around the surface if I could hold it on a string, if, if one spring clamp is strong enough to hold it up. So I might, I might try that in the future at some point. <laughs> so I'm cutting the other set of pentagons. These are the ones where the walnut is on the outside and the lighter color is on the inside. And on the set that I just glued up into a dodecahedron, I didn't really move the fence enough to give me enough of that vertical zone that I was after. And I was still getting the, the sharp corner in a few places. Didn't seem to be a big issue, but I thought on this one, I might pull the fence back just, just a smidge, so I might get a little bit more of that, that vertical part that I'm looking for. What that's gonna cause is that the outer part of the seam on the outside of the shape is gonna sort of come apart and not, not meet up. But I think that's okay because if I would turn these, that's the part I'm cutting off, so it, it shouldn't be an issue. And it should allow the pentagons to hopefully cut a little better. The other thing I did about midway through the other set is I added another clamp to the, to the sled. I was noticing that the pentagons kind of looked like they were moving a little bit as the blade started in on the cut. So with, with a second clamp, I, I get a second point of pressure, which I, I hope will help hold the Pentagon in place better. On the, on the second half of the other set, they, they did seem to be more set in the jig, and they, they seem to cut better. So I think it's helping. So I will finish up these and then glue them up. If I'm going to wood turn these now, I need to have a way of holding them either on the lathe or on the CNC machine, depending on which way I do it. So what I want to do is attach some blocking to the two ends. So I, I was going to just do a square, but then I realized I've had this problem before where I need to keep the center of the piece and the center of the part <laughs> intact when I attach that piece of blocking. And if I glue a square to a pentagon, it's going to be hard to know what the, the center is. So I cut out some circles on the CNC machine, and their radius comes right to the edge of the pentagon. So I can attach those to the piece and align them with the pentagon so I'll know where the center is. And then they're round, so I can either hold them on the lathe when I, do, when I do it that way. And I may get these started on the CNC machine, meaning I need, I need something to have the chuck hold on to and be centered. I also had the CNC drill a little hole right in the center. So I know where that is for the tailstock. So I can put the tailstock into that center and it'll be in exactly the right place. So if I want to turn this on the CNC, I need to know how big it is so I can make a model to, to cut the sphere around it. So what I came up with was to put a board across the top of one of the pentagons 
Th this kind of shape has a parallel pentagon on each side. So I can lay, lay it on one, one pentagon and then put a board on the other pentagon and I can measure each side. And then I know the radius to the, to the inner part of the pentagon. And it looks like it's about seven inches, which is kind of funny that it, it worked out to some, somewhat of a round number. I'm going to do is cut a slightly bigger than a seven inch sphere around the shape. I need to add the interface plate between the CNC lathe and the workpiece. So that's what I'm going to do here. And that's why I put so much height on these circles is I, I need some depth for the bolts to go into. So I can just mount that centered in the circle and then it will go onto the lathe really easily. In cutting these on the CNC, I did a couple of test passes to figure out if it was gonna work and what height I should take off. And in the end, I ended up doing two complete passes all the way around the sphere. And this seemed to work pretty well. I think trying to do it in one pass would have been taking off too much. Each pass took just a little less than 10 minutes. I also used a flat router bit as opposed to a bullnose bit. And I probably should have had a bullnose bit to do the curve. It might not have been so fuzzy at the edges. But I think the one that I have is in need of sharpening. <laughs> So I, I took the sphere off the CNC, and I took the mounting plate off of the sphere, or off of the blocking, I guess. And now, now what I want to do is put it on the lathe, and I want to sand off all of the fuzzy bits from the CNC. And then once I do that, I want to cut off the blocking with the bandsaw. Then I can finally start turning the sphere on the lathe. And really, the, the CNC work sort of got the rough part that would usually be done on the lathe done. And it's not necessarily quicker, but it gives me a perfect sphere, which works better with the cups that I have to hold the sphere on the lathe. So, so it gets to that point where the sphere kind of centers itself in the cups, and I can turn it quicker. So it makes this process much, much faster. As I got into turning this, I found that it it was seeding into the cups fairly well, but not quite as well as I'd hoped. And it actually took, took a little while, well, it, it took an hour or so, maybe a little more, to get the piece from what I got off the CNC into a nice sphere. It's a lot of very light, slow passes over and over and over again. I'm sanding, and I'm sanding, and I'm sanding. I sanded both spheres. I think I started at 60 grit, and I went up to 1,500. Um, so it took, took like an hour and a half, maybe, to do both of the spheres. Um, so I think I'm just going to do a regular finish. I got some YouTube standard issue black gloves for the finish. <laughs> I 
I can put finish on now. I got a new bottle of tongue oil, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna try that. So you're, you're supposed to put it on fairly thick. It's kind of hard doing a sphere because you have to hold it <laughs> while you're putting the finish on. This is where having a big, like a bucket of oil would be nice. You just plunge the whole thing in and pull it out. But I'll have to make do. So you put it on fairly thick, you let it sit for an hour, then you wipe off the ex extra. One hour later. Hopefully it gives it a nice, a good, just simple, super, super simple, clear finish. So they're done. <laughs> I think this is one of the least problematic projects I've done. Th things actually seem to work out pretty well. Um, one issue is, one, one thing that I kind of knew was going to happen, but it seemed like it happened more than I thought it was, was that the strip on the outside of the pentagons got so, so cut away in the transforming this into a sphere that they, they pretty much disappeared like the maple on this one is almost gone and and the walnut on this one so i think if the, i think if i was going to do this again i would make that strip much much wider because you, you really need a lot of width for that not to disappear into that angle the other little issue is i still i was still having trouble with the table saw chipping out the the point of the triangle so the centers of the pentagons have a have a little hole in them. I've 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 kind of cheated a little bit, and I, I used some wood filler on those. So one one thought I would love to do is to do something like this with the triangles and the pentagons, but then cut out the center of the pentagons and do an inlay on the CNC machine. So what I need is a a set of twelve things in popular culture, like the 12 days of Christmas is one thought. Or I could just do numbers, but that, that seems a little simpler. If anyone has any ideas about a set of 12 things that I could make a simple picture of for a sphere, that could be a really cool project. Thanks for watching.